after a long wait, we finally got our hands on Call of Duty's Battle Royale mode, Blackout, and it didn't disappoint. The game isn't perfect and definitely needs some tweaking, but overall, it's a well-made solid game that runs smooth and definitely has that Call of Duty flair to it. I managed to get a few good sessions in on Xbox and PlayStation, and from what I played, it runs extremely smoothly, with it being base jumping from a high platform, quad biking downhill, or gunplay, the game feels fluid. For example, being used to PUBG and its mechanics, to then start playing Blackout, you can really tell the difference. Driving around feels solid, and it doesn't feel like you could explode at any time. The map is colourful and vibrant, which keeps a player engaged more than a gloomy map would, and if this is a sign of things to come, Blackout has a successful future. Throughout the beta, Treyarch dropped hot fixes and adjustments to gameplay, as well as features like game modes, etc. It's good to see the game mode growing, and it's good to see Treyarch are keen on keeping the player base happy. Gaming has changed a lot recently, with studios and gamers always in talks. Evolving games with input from us, and I believe Epic Games, with their Fortnite Battle Royale, has created this open door culture. Completely different to the old closed door approach, where we wouldn't have an idea what's going on behind the scenes, and even if they cared about the gamers at all. Now I've got that bit out of the way, let's get into the meat and bones of this video. The full game has just dropped, so I thought this was the perfect opportunity to give my top 12 things to know when starting out on Blackout. 12. Jumping from the helicopter. Like most Battle Royale games, the start of each match, you jump from some sort of aircraft, but the difference is, in Blackout, you have a wingsuit instead of free falling. This does mean you can virtually reach anywhere on the map, if done correctly. It's quite easy to master after a few jumps, but one thing to bear in mind, when your parachute does deploy, you don't have that much control. You can also wingsuit from height, with it being off the dam or a helicopter. This really does add verticality to the game mode, but it's something to be aware of. Also, something I do need to add is unintentionally by Treyarch, you can wingsuit to any destination on the map faster than the helicopters travel. So at the minute, it's best to jump as early as possible. I had noticed players at destinations way before I land, and I was puzzled how they got there so fast. I know Treyarch are looking to change this, but it's something you need to bear in mind. 11. Running, hiding, camping, no bush camping, but plenty of grass dwelling. Like all Battle Royale games, running across map can be dangerous and Blackout isn't any different. So it's a good idea to keep an eye out at all times and keep your crosshairs up, ready to engage at any time, especially if you're passing built up areas. There seems to be a lot of camping going on in this game and even though it's a fast paced mode, it can be slow at times. Usually if you are hiding in buildings, you have the upper hand over the enemy and bathroom camping seems to be the new bush camping. You aren't actually able to bush camp in Blackout, but you do need to be aware of grass dwellers. You can lay in the grass next to objects and be virtually impossible to spot. 10. Bullet drop and bullet travel time. For the first time in any Call of Duty release, bullet drop and bullet travel time has been introduced. This means you have to take distance into consideration. This has never been a thing in Call of Duty before, as the maps and sightlines were way too small to even consider, but now we have a big map, it's something to learn. It works the same as most other shooting games, making you aim high enough and that you lead the shot just right. It does take some practice, but one thing to consider is that each weapon performs differently and the bullet travel time may be different on one weapon to another. Also, don't forget to hold your breath when shooting with a sniper, this will make your shots a lot more accurate. 9. Supply drops and supply locations. Supply drops drop throughout matches at random locations and work the same as all other Battle Royale games. The packages contain high value items like fully attached gold rare weapons, level 3 armour and gadgets. You can also find supply locations around the map, they don't always spawn in the same place but these contain the same items as supply drops. You can also find little health packs that contain collection of meds. 8. Quick menu. The quick menu allows you to select a number of items from your inventory without stopping gameplay, i.e. on the move. It's an extremely useful tool and once used to it, saves a lot of time. As it stands, I believe it isn't actually in the PC version of the game. Instead, on PC, you actually have to go into your inventory to select an item, but PC does have a better looting system, meaning you can see multiple nearby items in your inventory. 7. Equipment. There are a variety of gadgets in Blackout, 12 to be precise, which can be useful in many different situations and something you really need to utilise if you want to get the upper hand over the enemy. The grapple is great for confusing the enemy and getting out of tight spots. The spotting gun is really useful for all types of situations, especially when you feel like you are at a disadvantage, but remember to use the map to spot the enemies. 
but the deployable shield is my favourite and can help when you find yourself out in the open without any cover. But be aware it's pretty loud and can bring unwanted attention. You can also pick up a backpack which increases your inventory from 5 slots to 10. 6. Ammo Ammo plays a big part in Blackout and something to be aware of at all times. There are 8 different types of ammo in Blackout and it takes some time getting to know which weapon takes which ammo type. You can pick up ammo from all the usual spots, crates, downed enemies, etc. Ammo doesn't take up an inventory space, each type has its own designated slot, but you can only carry 200 of each. 5. Health and Meds There are three different types of meds in Blackout, bandages, medkits and trauma kits. You start with 150 health and bandages and medkits bring your health back up to 150, whereas trauma kits will take your health to 200. 4. Armour There are three different types of armour in the game, level 1, 2 and 3, with 3 being the strongest. It has its own slot and you can tell what condition it is in by looking at the bottom left of your heads up display. It's also a good idea to keep an eye on the condition of your armour at all times. As it stands, armour plays a massive part in keeping you alive in Blackout. There is an audio indication when yours or the enemy's armour breaks, so it's something to listen out for when in gunfights. 3. Perks There's a selection of 17 consumable perks found in all the usual looting spots and if used correctly can definitely give you the upper hand in the right situation. You can already tell utilising perks like equipment will be meta to winning a match in Blackout, especially once the community have had their hands on the game for a while and have got used to the mechanics. For these perks to take effect you must activate it from your inventory which will take 2 seconds to do so. There are 21 at launch and I wouldn't be surprised if Treyarch add more over time. I'm not going to reel off the whole list but some of the most useful perks are Skulker, move faster when crouched and prone, Stimulant, increase health by 100, Awareness, enemy footsteps are louder and Dead Silence, move quietly. 2. Zombies and Mystery Box Zombies play a huge part in Blackout, but not a crucial part, which means if you don't want any zombie interactions, you don't have to. As a massive Zombies fan, it's great to see how big of a part Zombies play in this mode, and this is definitely a nod by Treyarch to say thank you to the Zombies community for their loyal support over the years. It's not only Zombies, there is also a mystery box which you can get weapons, armour and other supplies out of. And like Zombies, it can be found by looking for the beam of light. It also wouldn't be zombies without hidden easter eggs. The community have already found a few, one being flushing the toilet at Asylum gets the OG zombie easter egg song to play. As I said, you don't have to have zombie interactions if you don't want, and zombies can only be found in zombie locations, like Asylum and the Lighthouse. But in doing so, you are likely to find good loot, like the Zombies Mode Ray Gun by killing zombies or searching in that area. During the beta, Triarch also introduced a zombie boss, which would reward you well if you managed to kill it, but believe me, it isn't that easy, especially when other players are looking to take you out as well. 1. Dropping a weapon and adding attachments Each of the 24 weapons can have an array of attachments, from stocks to scopes, but it does vary from weapon to weapon. There are 17 different attachments in Blackout, and when picking up an attachment, whichever weapon you have equipped in your hands, if compatible, will be attached and if not, it will be put in your backpack if there's space. Something to be aware of, when picking up an attachment, it will automatically swap and drop an attachment in its place if on the weapon already. There's also the option when picking up an attachment to put it straight into your backpack if there's enough space. To unattach attachments from a weapon, you have to hover over the item in your inventory and unattach each attachment one by one, by either dropping it on the floor or into your backpack. The easiest way I've found of switching attachments between weapons is to unattach all onto the ground, equip the desired weapon in your hands and attach that way. It is also possible to attach attachments from your backpack to a weapon by using the quick menu. Just hover over the item and press the correct command and the item will be attached to the equipped weapon. When looting, keep an eye out for gold rare weapons. These are a variant and come fully attached. It can be tricky sometimes deciding on a loadout and which weapon to take, especially as loot isn't really an issue in Blackout and you always seem to find a weapon you like. If you come across a rare gold fully attached weapon but don't want to swap because you like the weapon you have already, you can always unattach all the attachments of the rare gold weapon and attach them to your current weapon. Right, that's it for this one. As I said, I really like Blackout and it'd be interesting to see where Treyarch take it. They're already talking about limited time events and new locations being added to the current map. I'm going to try and cover as much Blackout as possible with videos on tips and tricks, weapons analysis, consumable breakdowns, etc. Things to give you guys the upper hand over the enemy. 
Don't forget to like if you liked, comment and sub, hit the little bell. Catch you all again soon. I've been Rough Diamond. Laters.